I'm going to try to spend the next 100 days in Ark, modded with new dinosaurs on Aberration. These mods add hundreds of new high quality creatures, including new herbivores, powerful hybrids, apex predators, and so much more. In this video, I plan on taming as many new dinosaurs as I can, building an epic base, slaying Edmund Rockwell, and descending off this broken Ark. On day one, I woke up inside a giant metal portal, and was already surrounded by danger. But there's a raptors and a basilisk. I'm a snag. I gathered some mushrooms and berries from the ground, but then started to become dehydrated, so I went looking for a water source. I came across a metal tunnel that I ran through, and at the end of it, I found a big lake. So let's drop right here. Now that I had water, it was time to find some stone to make a pickaxe with. Instead, I found a sheep and almost bumped into a pack of ravages. Ooh, ravages, ravages. On day two, I swam to a small island in the middle of the lake and found lots of metal and crystal. I also found a gross looking plant and some red mushrooms that made me trip out. Whoa, 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 whoa. I kept on exploring and got some silica pearls from under the water. Then I walked right past a mega raptor. Oh my, it's a mega raptor. And into a dead ravager. I didn't see any other ravagers nearby, so I quickly harvested it with my bare hands. And then there was an earthquake. And from it, I finally got some stone. Stone! I punched a mushroom tree for some thatch and fungal wood, and I was now able to craft a pickaxe. I harvested a rock and crafted a hatchet, torch, and a set of cloth armor. On day three, I returned to the small island and made a thatch foundation, a storage box, and a campfire. I cooked up the ravager meat that I got, harvested another rock, and made a forge. I got some metal and then started smelting it. With the metal, I made a smithy, and inside it, I crafted a metal pickaxe. I harvested a ton more metal and crystal, and then made an awesome spyglass, which showed me a lot of useful information on creatures when I pointed it at them. On day 4 I made a mortar and pestle, and started making narcotics. Then I crafted a metal hatchet, some bowlers, a crossbow, a lot of arrows, and some trank arrows. And I went looking for creatures to tame. I spied on a dino Kairos from afar, a very powerful and aggressive herbivore. I found a very colourful aberrant Zuniceratops. I couldn't tame it though, as you can only tame their babies. Then I found a bob dog and tamed her by feeding her an aquatic mushroom. I named her Inu and put her on my shoulder. She would be helpful for lighting up dark areas. Then I found a dead Kano. I harvested its body and got some loot from its inventory. I spent the rest of the day harvesting materials. My search to tame new beasts continued on day 5. Ravages, killing a nest, There's tons of bugs. And I found a herd of aberrant Pinacosauruses. These friendly dinosaurs were very easy to tame. All you had to do was snuggle them. I started taming a blue one, but then dragonflies started attacking me. It was a challenging fight, but I managed to bring them down with my crossbow, and I got a lot of chitin from their bodies. I went back to snuggling the Pinaco, however it was very difficult to find him, because of how many there were. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Pinacos. Okay, I was taming this one. Snuggle. Tamed it, yay! Crunchy peanut butter. I made his saddle and I was not able to ride him. He was very slow, but he was good at harvesting berries and rocks. Then I found a fertilized Postosuchus egg. I couldn't see its parents anywhere, so I took the egg and we ran away. Back at my thatch base, I was not able to harvest the red mushrooms, as crunchy peanut butter was immune to the hallucinations. From them we got biotoxin, a very powerful narcotic. After that, I tried hatching the Postosuchus egg, so I made a bunch of standing torches to warm it up to the right temperature. The egg hatched the next day, and a little girl was born. I gave her some meat and named her Tenten. I needed more hide to make her saddle, so we went out and killed a parasol together. Then I made her saddle, and she was much faster than crunchy peanut butter. She was also good at killing small to medium-sized creatures. Then we watched a pair of parasols fight something called a Belurosaurus. The parasols won, so we harvested the Bellowers corpse, and also killed one of the Parasas, as it was very weak after the fight. Then I made some improved cryopods, called soul traps. These would be handy for transporting my dinosaurs around. After that I crafted two water jars, and a set of hide armor. On day 7, me and Tenten went exploring. We saw lots of Suchomimuses, as well as giant crabs and Spinosauruses. All very dangerous creatures. We got attacked by a Sarko, but Tenten was able to kill it. Then we came across a strange dinosaur called a Daspletosaurus. She started following us, but she didn't attack. She seemed friendly, so I started feeding her meat, 
and she continued following us around. We arrived at a cliff and she jumped off. Bye. She was never seen again. Then we saw the bioluminescent region in the distance, also known as the Blue Zone. Tan Tan was definitely not strong enough to explore it though, so I would come back later. After that I found some green gems, a massive brachiosaurus, and a group of scorpions that were bullying some bulb dogs. Yeah, leave the bulb dogs alone. No, I killed a bulb dog. It murdered it. The next day we arrived at the place where I first spawned. We found lots of sheep here, which we killed for their mutton. Now taming carnivores would be a lot easier. At the end of the day we arrived back at base and I made myself a set of flak armor. Then I made an upgrade station, a useful structure where I could upgrade my equipment without the need for supply drops or blueprints. I upgraded my crossbow to journeyman tier, which was pretty expensive, but worth it, as it now did a lot more damage and had a lot more durability. On day 9 I made zipline anchors. These would be good for getting to high up places, as there are no flies on aberration. Oh, look at me, I'm on a zipline. Then I saw a suko mimus near my base. I wanted to try and tame it. So I started harvesting resources to make a trap. The next day I made structures for a stone ramp trap, but the suko mimus had disappeared. So I went looking for more, and I found a ton, even hundreds, all crowded along a river. We ran past all of them and found a good area to build the trap. I built most of it, but then I had to go back to base for more supplies. On the way we got attacked by a wild postosuchus. We also found a dead crab. We got lots of chitin and organic polymer from its body. And then we found an aberrant oxalea, a small and friendly type of spinosaur. I started feeding her mutton, and she would be an excellent team. After a whole day of waiting for her to be hungry again, she finally tamed. If it wasn't for the mutton, it would have taken forever to tame her. I named her Hinata, put her in a soul trap, and we went back to base. Ah, oh, right on the side. And like right here. Whoa, look at that, she could sit down. She was bigger and faster than Ten Ten, both on land and in water. I tested her combat abilities against a pair of parasols, and she destroyed them. She was definitely stronger than Ten Ten, but she still wasn't strong enough to rival the apex predators in the area. So we went back to the Sukumimus river on day 13, and I finished building the trap. But while I was building it, no, Sukas kept trying to kill me. Hinata wasn't able to outrun them, so we had to fight back. Luckily she was strong enough to kill them one at a time. We found a decent level Suko, got him to chase us, and lured him into the trap. Get in the trap, come on. Got it. And I started shooting him with Trank Arrows. Nice. I'll give you the mutton. And he finished taming on day 14. I named him Neji. Back at base, I made him a saddle and tested him out. Whoa. He was around the same size as Hinatar, but he was a lot faster. And swam at super speeds. Then we tried fighting a Parasaur. He had a lot of awesome attacks. But then we accidentally hit a red panda, which made every creature in the vicinity try to kill us. We ran away and shook off all of the creatures, except for an angry Narcetoceratops. These large herbivores are very strong and very annoying. If they see you hurting any herbivore, they'll defend it and stop at nothing to kill you. It was a long fight, but we managed to beat it. And after that we fought and killed two other Sukumamuses that were very close to the base. On day 15, now that I had a fast and powerful mount, I went exploring the map in search of blue gems and a new base location. While exploring, I saw an alpha Narcetoceratops with almost 100,000 health. Then I found a giant beehive. I stole its honey, and then a swarm of giant bees started attacking me. I almost died. After dealing with them, we started walking away, and then all of a sudden, I started hallucinating. My health was rapidly going down. I respawned and got all of my stuff back, and saw what killed me. Spores. Little mushroom spores floating around in the air. How could a man like me be beaten by these yellow specks of light? Depressed and defeated, I started making my way back home. Then I came across a roller. As I had just collected some honey, I decided to try and tame him. I put one jar of honey in my hot bar, waited for him to dig underground, and then threw the honey at him. He ate it and started taming. I did it again, and he tamed. Yay! Got him. Hello, Georgie. I was about to make his saddle the next day when I realized it costed 425 metal ingots to make. After that, me and Neji continued exploring, and we found lots of interesting things. First we found an Alpha Dinochiris, 
and this guy had over 100,000 health, and was much stronger than even the Alpha Narcetoceratops. We left the area immediately, as something like that could kill us in mere seconds. Then we arrived at the other end of the Sukumamis River, and I found a Plateosaurus. These dinosaurs love narcotics, and were able to convert narcoberries into narcotics without the need of spoiled meat. We tamed him with a piece of biotoxin and named him Shikamaru. Then we found the entrance to the Blue Zone, where we killed an aberrant Megalosaurus and harvested some blue gems. On day 17, we found an amazing spot to make the new base. It had water, a gas vein, metal, and easy access to the Blue Zone. I marked its location on my map and returned later to build the base. Later we killed tech dinosaurs to get electronics, and then we came across a massive lake. I found and knocked out a Ravager and tried to tame her, but then she got murdered by a Dinochirus. I tried to get my mud and back from her inventory, but then Neji ate her corpse and accidentally hit a Chunkingosaurus, a type of Stegosaur that was very fast, very strong, and used poison to kill its victims. Luckily Neji was able to outrun it, because I did not want to fight something like that. We found Apostasuchus staring at a Parasaur's corpse. It was very creepy. On day 18, I almost died to mushroom spores again. Luckily this time, I was able to get away from them before dying. We then found giant crystals that made chiming noises. And we watched a 1v1 between another Sukumimus and a Spino. On day 19, we found another Ravager. I knocked him out while riding safely on Neji, gave him some mudden, and he tamed. I named him Naruto. Then we arrived here. This place was where me and my friend made our base on my first playthrough of Aberration. My first arc videos were also made during that playthrough. Ah, good times. After that trip down memory lane, we took a swim in the lake, and this lake was insanely huge. On day 20, we found a broken TV, another mushroom sport area, and a basilisk that we ran away from. We ended our journey by jumping off a massive diving board. Back at base, I showed Shikamaru and Naruto to their new friends. I got Shikamaru started on producing narcotics, and then the gross plant spat out a seed. I picked it up, as it could be useful. I made Naruto a saddle and tested him out. He had good weight, decent speed, an amazing jump, and could climb zip lines. The next day, I used the blue gems that I found to make a glider suit. Whoa! <laughs> After that, I put everyone into soul traps, packed my stuff into Neji and Naruto's inventories, and said goodbye to the thatch base. Goodbye little trilobites, it was fun being your neighbor. On the way to the new base location, we got attacked by many things. What the? What? But we survived and arrived at the end of day 22, when we got welcomed by a Carnaraptor. This special hybrid was very strong and very agile, so I tried taming him. But unfortunately, he got murdered by a Saltosaurus. No! <laughs> How dare you! On day 23, me and Crunchy Peanut Butter got rid of a lot of bushes, mushrooms, and rocks to make room for the new base. Then I began building. I used stone triangle foundations, normal foundations, double doors, window walls, normal walls, ceilings, and railings to make the structure of the house. While building, I had to harvest tons of materials, and I also got a lot of congealed gas balls from a gas vein right next to me. One time I got too close while I was erupting, and it almost killed me. After four days of building, I tried to connect zip lines from the house to the blue zone. But when me and Naruto tested it out, we fell down into <laughs> the blue zone. There was no way of getting back up, so we had to look for another exit. While looking around, we found lots of dangerous creatures. Nameless, Australovenators, Anthrocosaurus, a Dilophovenatrix, and a Chilantesaurus. The Dilophovenatrix saw us and started attacking. It was too powerful to fight and too fast to outrun. It kept on chasing us even after we left the blue zone. We got it to attack a Paranarcetoceratops, and we made our escape. Naruto barely survived. The blue zone is a dangerous, dangerous place. On day 28, I went back to building. Added some wood pillars and a shag rug for decoration. I placed down the crafting stations and a feeding trough. Removed the resources from Neji and Naruto's inventories into them. Then I got everyone out from their soul traps. And here's the house. It's uh, decently sized can walk through and this is the main room actually it's the only room of the house and then we can use a rope ladder and then you you arrive up here oh yeah Naruto's here <laughs> and you can see over uh, your surroundings on day 30 I made eight forges I got them to start smelting all my metal then I made a fabricator and some gasoline to power it with it I made a generator and some cables 
The next day, me and Peanut went and harvested a lot of metal. After that, I made a zipline motor in the fabricator. This was supposed to let me go up ziplines, as well as down, but they kept making me glitch into things, and made me get stuck. On day 32, I made a sickle, and harvested a lot of fibre, so I could make climbing picks and glow sticks. Then I made a soul gun. This made it easier to use the soul traps. With all these new tools, I was now ready. Ready to leave the fertile region, and venture into the blue zone. Straight away we were welcomed by some Nameless and a Rock Drake, but they are no match for Neji. Then we saw a Dilifer Venetrix up close. Luckily they didn't try to eat Neji, as he was too much of a big boy. We then found a Spinoraptor, a very powerful hybrid. And then we climbed a gigantic tree branch, and arrived near the base. We used my climbing picks to get closer, and then attached a new zipline from on top of the branch to the base. Hopefully now, Naruto would be able to climb over without falling. Back down on the ground, we got attacked by an Anthracosaurus. It paralyzed Neji with its electricity, and severely poisoned him. As soon as he was no longer paralyzed, I used his spin attack, and we ran away. And we came to a bridge of land that overlooked a beautiful, light blue lake. Then we entered a magical blue and purple forest. Later on, we got attacked by a Torvosaurus, a large carnivore that poisoned Neji with its venom. But we still crushed it with ease. We then walked past giant pink crystals, and arrived at the entrance to the red zone, the Molten Element region. After fighting off a Seeker, we got harassed by a Concavenator, swimming underneath the dirt. After dealing with them, we tried to enter the red zone to get red gems, but I started getting radiation sickness, so we had to turn back. On day 35, we started heading back home. On the way, a Chilantesaurus picked a fight with us. Oh no! Get away from me. Killed it. As I wasn't able to get red gems from the red zone without dying from radiation, I would have to get them another way. So I found a pair of roller rats, waited for them to dig up some red gems. After lots of green and blues, I eventually got a handful of 21 red gems. <gasps> red gem! Oh, I got 21! I used them to make a gas collector, and placed it on the gas vein next to my house. Over time, this would collect congealed gas balls, which I needed to make a hazard suit. In the meantime, I went hunting giant crabs with Neji and Hinata to get organic polymer. On day 38, I used the organic polymer and other materials to make the industrial forge, and I could now smelt things very quickly. I spent the rest of the day harvesting rocks with crunchy peanut butter. On day 39, I finally made Choji his saddle. Yay. Oh, look at that. Whee. Not only was Choji super fast, but he was also amazing at harvesting wood. Then I made a chemistry bench, an industrial grill, and a fridge. The next day, I used the ziplines I installed to go to the blue zone with Naruto, and me and Crunchy Peanut Butter got thousands of metal by harvesting glowing blue rocks. Oh my! On day 41, I installed 9 air conditioners in my base to help with hatching eggs in the future. Then I made a greenhouse with stone foundations, stairs, railings, greenhouse walls, sloped walls, ceilings, and sloped ceilings. I made 8 large crop plots and a bunch of pipes to irrigate them. I planted savory, citronol, long grass, and rock carrot seeds in the crop plots, as well as strawberry seeds, a new type of fruit from the mud pack. Then I made an item collector, a modded structure powered by gasoline that picks up eggs and poop from the ground. I put the poop into the crop plots to fertilize them. On day 43, the gas collector had now collected 205 gas balls. Now I could make myself a full hazard suit. This would protect me from the radiation in the red zone, and also the evil mushroom spores that killed me on day 15. Then I made some new weapons, and some shocking tranquilizer darts. After that we went hunting trilobites for the oil, and this was very nostalgic for me, because this was where I recorded my very first arc video. On day 45 we hunted giant crabs for their organic polymer, and had to fight tons of sucos at the same time. We even fought a dinosuchus at one point. On day 46 I made an industrial cooker. I used it to cook some medical brew. This stuff helped me to quickly regenerate my health. Then I made some crop blend with the crops that were now growing very well, and I headed out to tame some new herbivores. I found a group of gigant Spinosauruses the next day, a type of stegosaur with massive spikes on their shoulders. I fed one of them crop blend, and after two feedings, she tamed. I named her Tamari. She was a very useful herbivore, pretty fast and amazing at harvesting berries. She was also pretty good at fighting, as enemies took damage from her shoulder spikes every time they hit her. On day 48, I tended to my crops, made more crop blend, and healed Neji with the help of fish meat 
and one of those gross alien plants, as he was still injured from fighting giant crabs and sucas from the other day. On day 49, I found and tried to tame a Chunkingosaurus, the poisonous stegosaur that Neji accidentally hit on day 17. It was taking a while to tame, so in the meantime, I went back to base to make a catapult turret and some wooden structures to tame the next creature that I needed. I finished taming the Chunkingosaurus the next day and named him Kankuro. He was around the same speed as Tamari and was also able to reflect incoming damage back to his attackers. He was, however, much, much stronger. Get out of here. <laughs> Look at that attack. We are now 50 days into this epic journey, and also at the halfway point of this video. So now would be a good time to go get a drink and some food. Oh, and if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button, as it helps to push the video to more people. And leave a comment saying, Mr. Danska is your favorite team, so that we can confuse everyone who skipped this part of the video. On day 51, I crafted some stone gates and a large bear trap, and went out to tame a giant crab. I made a simple gate trap, and built a tower with a catapult turret on top. I crafted some boulders in the catapult, and then lured a giant crab into the trap, and blocked her in. And I started knocking her out, by pelting her body with boulders. She soon became very close to dying, so I had to stop shooting. I gave her some corpses to replenish her health with, but she was too scared to even move. After a whole day of waiting, she finally stopped being scared, and I got her to eat the corpses. Now that she was at full health, I was able to finish knocking her out. Got it! Got it! Here's the spoiled meat. Hey! She know I had an amazing jump, and was also pretty good at fighting, but the best part about her was that she could pick up creatures. This would be helpful for taming the next modded dinosaurs. She could also throw creatures super far. Goodbye, Sultasauruses. Enjoy the blue zone. So we travelled towards the blue zone to tame some new carnivores. The first one that I found was a Torvosaurus, the large poisonous carnivore that attacked us on day 34. I knocked him out while at a safe distance and named him Gara. Deeper into the blue zone, we found a Spinoraptor. I used Shino to pick her up, and then I started shanking her while she was stuck in Shino's claw. She fought back though, and she did tons of damage. Once she was almost unconscious, she tried to run away, but she was unable to break free from Shino's mighty grasp. I got her knocked out, and she tamed the next day. I named her Kushina. After that, I turned Inu's light off to let lots of nameless spawn. We killed them and got a lot of nameless venom, something I would soon need. Later on, I forgot to put on my hazard suit, and walked into some freezing mushroom spores, which made me trip out for a good two minutes. Without my medical brew, I definitely would have died. After that, I found a little shinehorn skipping around. He was a light pet, like Inu was. I tamed him with one of the alien plant seeds that I got back on day 20. I named him Goat. Then I found a Dilipho Venetrix. I tamed it and named her Tsunade. We then arrived at a waterfall, surrounded by pink crystals. It was so beautiful. Then we found a Carnaraptor. I tamed her and named her Inu. On day 57, we swam through a pink and blue lake and arrived at the red zone once again. Now that I had a full hazard suit, I could explore more than just the entrance. And straight away, we got attacked by a pack of Inostrans Sivia. And these things were powerful. And deeper into the red zone, I found a Featherlight. I tamed him with a seed, but didn't name him for now. Then we got attacked by a rock drake and a pack of concavenators. We fought them off, and then we were seen by a Neo Venator, a large carnivore even stronger than the T Rex. We tried running away, but it was too fast, so we had to try and fight it. It was a very difficult battle. Then we traveled further into the red zone and awoke a Reaper Queen, the ultimate monster of aberration. We had no chance of killing it, so we ran away as fast as we could. We left the red zone and kept running all the way through the blue zone and back into the green zone. On day 58, we arrived safely back at base. Then I got out all of the new creatures I had tamed during my taming spree. I made Garo the Tovasaurus a settle and tried him out. He had more health and did more damage than Neji, and he also inflicted venom with his bites that made him do even more damage. But he was quite a bit slower, so Neji would still be my main mount for now. Next I tried Kishina, who didn't even need a saddle to be ridden. Being a Spinoraptor, she had the power of a Spino and the agility of a Raptor. She was very fast and did a lot of damage, even more than Gara. 
she has to give me an insulation bar, which helped to keep me at the right temperature. However, since she wasn't that big, lots of carnivores tried to eat her, making it difficult for her to survive in the blue zone. On day 59, I made Inno the Carnaraptor a saddle. She was slower than Kishina, but had an amazing jump, and could run super fast with her charge attack. It used a lot of stamina though. She also did around the same amount of damage, and was a lot more tanky. Next I made Tsunade the Dilla for Venetrix a saddle. While she had very little health, she was very fast and very powerful, dealing insane damage, and inflicting a venom even more powerful than the Torvesauruses. After that I got out Goat and the Featherlight, who I named Asuma. I replaced Inu with Goat as my main light pet, as he had better charge, and was much cuter. On day 60, I crafted Kushina something called a Kami Implant. This gave her 25 armor to make up for the lack of a saddle. Then me and Tamari harvested a lot of red mushrooms for biotoxin. And late at night, I crafted more shocking trank darts. On day 61, I went looking for a Bellua Saurus, as I had seen quite a few of them around, and I wanted to tame one. We found one pretty quick, but we had to save it from a pair of Achillobaters, who were very powerful. I tamed and named her Karin. She looked like a smaller version of the T-Rex, and had horns on the tip of her nose. She had horrible health, and was pretty bad at fighting, but she was able to harvest rocks, crystals, and gems with her horns, and she got a weight reduction on them in her inventory. On day 62, we harvested thousands of blue gems, and then I was able to make myself a spare hazard suit, as well as upgrade my main suit to apprentice tier. On day 63, we headed into the red zone again, and this time, I was prepared. I brought Neji, Hinata, Kushina, Gara, and Shina with me, and together we killed anything that tried to pick a fight with us. Seekers, Inostransivia, Concavenators, Neovenators, Rock Drakes, Basilisks, nothing could stand in our way. I even managed to harvest some red gems in between fighting. We even walked past the waterfall of pure liquid element and arrived at the Rock Drake Trench. On day 65, we killed every Rock Drake in sight. We descended down into the trench and I harvested a purple rock that gave me element ore. Then I grabbed a rock drake egg, and more rock drakes appeared, angry that I stole one of their children. We killed them all, and I yoinked three more eggs. I exited the trench with Shino, as she was the only team that I had who could jump high enough to get out. On day 66, after fighting off groups of Kakarodontosauruses, more Neovenators, and other creatures, we made it back to the blue zone, where we saw some little lamps called Lamprey. We returned home in the morning, and I started hatching the highest level rock drake egg, next to my air conditioners. The egg hatched, and out came a baby rock drake. I gave her all the nameless venom I had, to keep her well fed, and I named her Rock Lee. I imprinted on her, and made her a saddle once she was all grown up. She was my biggest tame yet, and was extremely fast when gliding. She could also climb up walls, we were able to glide up to the areas of aberration that I had never even seen before. She was pretty strong too, and had the ability to turn invisible. Even though she wasn't a modded creature, she was still my best team on aberrations so far. On day 69, we went hunting to get Rockley experience and level her up. Then I got the other Rock Drake eggs, and went looking for a Basilisk to tame. I found one pretty quickly, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to come out of the ground. I left it alone and found another one the next day, but it was fighting a Brachiosaurus. We helped it out, as Brachys are very strong but then it started fighting a pair of Saltasauruses. We helped it again, and then I dropped one of the Rock Jake eggs near it. She slithered over to it, ate it, and tamed. I named her Orochimaru. Orochimaru was pretty fast and very powerful. Probably my strongest tame so far. The main reason I tamed her though, was to get a Basilisk egg. Something I needed to tame the Apex Predator, the Neo Venator. On day 71, I went exploring the rest of the red zone with Rock Lee and it was much easier, now that I could glide over everything that wanted to eat me. After three whole days of exploring the red zone, I had filled up my map's blank spaces, and it was time to return to base. On day 74, there was only one biome left that we hadn't explored, the surface. So me and Rock Lee headed out to one of the three surface entrances. But we had to wait for night, because if you go out during the day, you'll get burnt to death by the sun. Once night came, the flames disappeared, and we were able to head out into the barren wasteland. We soon found a surface Reaper King, and it was level 148. It was smaller than the Reaper Queen, but still very powerful. 
I decided to fight it to see just how strong it was. It had more health and almost equal damage to Rockley, and it also took reduced damage from all attacks. But with Goat's Light, we were able to weaken it and ignore the damage reduction. A bunch of Nameless and Secrets came to join the fight as well. After a long and intense battle, we were able to kill it. But it didn't even drop anything, besides a cloud of dangerous acid. And now Rockley was extremely injured, so we went back to the green zone to heal up. We came back with full HP, and I realised that we could climb up to these spiky rocks to be safe from the Reapers. Good thing they couldn't climb. It was actually pretty peaceful up here, and I was able to look at the starry sky for the first time in 74 days. Later on, I opened a yellow loot drop, and I got a journeyman shotgun and a blueprint for flak leggings. On day 75, we went to the second surface area, and this area was much smaller. We didn't bother any of the reapers this time, and I managed to open a purple loot drop and got apprentice flak leggings. We went to the third and final surface area, which was pretty close to my base. This area was very big and open. We climbed up to the tallest rock we could find and looked over the ugly landscape. And in the sky behind us, we saw a destroyed piece of the ark and a big planet. I opened a blue loot drop and got Mastercraft chitin leggings and a blueprint for a lance. On day 76, I upgraded my pump shotgun to Mastercraft here and crafted hundreds more shotgun ammo. I also crafted some charge batteries that I charged up at a charge node and a charged lantern. Then we headed to the blue zone to test them out. First I tested the upgraded shotgun on a dealer for Venetrix, and I killed it in just 3 shots. Then I tested the charged lantern on some nameless. Yeah, get out of here. Oh look at that, it stuns them. Haha. <laughs> oh! There's two of them now. Yeah, run out of here. High intensity. Yeah, look at him. Dumb guy. <laughs> I killed him once. Ooh. On day 77, I killed all the nameless that I had just angered and got lots of nameless venom. After that, we went hunting basilisks. They were very strong, but no match for the combined strength of Rock Lee and Gara. On day 80, we went deep into the red zone to kill a Reaper Queen in order to get Reaper Pheromone Glands. It took a while, but we eventually found one. And then she jumped off a cliff and straight into a river of liquid element. We went down to her and almost fell into the river ourselves. I was wondering how to get her out of the river when another one started digging its way towards us. She had a lot more health than the Reaper Kings that we burst the other day, but luckily she did a lot less damage, so she wasn't too hard to fight. We injured her quite a bit, and then a bunch of Concavenators and Arthur Pluris joined the battle, and when they died she ate their corpses and regenerated all of her health. It was super annoying. Once we cleared out all the nearby creatures, I got Gara out to help us. After that, Killing her was easy work. Yo, he got 30 levels from that. And he also got 5 Reaper Ferman Glance. Next we needed to get the 3 artifacts of Aberration. So we headed to the old railway cave for the first artifact. This cave was in the green zone, right behind the old base. Turn on. Glow tail. Here you go. Oh. Kakesh. Yes, the artifact. And I had the first artifact and all four light pits. And I crafted a scuba suit and we headed out to the hidden grotto in the blue zone to get the next artifact. This entrance was at the bottom of a lake and after a lot of swimming, we were in the cave. I spent multiple days running around here, completely lost and having no idea where I was supposed to go. But luckily I had a new Blitz tutorial video to help me out. Hi guys, Steve here. There were so many deadly things in this cave. We even had to fight a Saimasaurus. Just when I thought the chaos was over, an earthquake began and I started getting thrown around in all directions. Once it settled down, I finally arrived at the artifact chamber, where I grabbed the artifact of the shadows. But I couldn't rest yet, as there was still one more cave, the elemental vault in the red zone. This cave was surprisingly easy. All I had to do was turn invisible with a rock lee, and then climb on the walls and ceilings, following these blue crystals towards the artifact. I did run out of stamina at one point, and got attacked by a lot of seekers, but luckily nothing else noticed us. Before long, we arrived at the artifact. We 
It cleared out the area and I grabbed it, the artifact of the Stalker. We returned home on day 85 and I now had all three artifacts of aberration, but Orochimaru still hadn't laid a single egg. This was bad, very bad. So I headed out to tame the only other creature that I knew laid extra large eggs, the Brachiosaurus. The Brachia was a knockout team, but it was too strong to be knocked out using tranquilizers. I got one to chase after me, and then every time she stood on her back legs, I shot at them with my pump shotgun. I had to be very careful when shooting, because if I got too close while she was standing up, she would use her mega stomp attack and kill me in one hit. After a bit more shooting, her legs gave out and she fell over. I gave her some crop blend, but then I realized that her torpor was rapidly draining. So I started force feeding her biotoxin to keep her knocked out. Then I realized that the crop blend was barely taming her, so I gave her a bunch of savour roots instead. While waiting for her to tame, a little red panda walked past us. I went over to her and tamed her with just one piece of mutton. I named her Kurama and she was very adorable. At the end of day 86, after 20 feedings, the Brachy finally tamed. Yay! Finally! And I named her Hashirama. Hashirama was so insanely massive that she made the rest of my tames look tiny. She had tens of thousands of health and thousands of weight and could harvest almost any material. She also did crazy amounts of damage. <laughs> Got two spies at once. And had a fear were powerful enough to scare off a Giga. But these weren't the reasons I tamed her. I tamed her for them eggs. So on day 88, I went looking for a male Bracky. Instead I found a little Binturong. I tamed him with a piece of mudden and named him Kibba. This cute little guy smelled like popcorn, which caused wild creatures to become hungry faster and eat more often. This would be very useful for taming things. Later I found and knocked down a male Bracky. Yeah. Go to sleep. Gave him some Savarits and Biotoxin, and got Kibber out to drain his food bar and make him tame faster. No! No! Killed it. He finally finished taming at the end of day 89, and I named him Madara. Back at base, I showed him to his new wife, Hashirama, and then I showed Kiba to his new friends. On day 90, I made Hashirama and Madara breed. While waiting for Hashirama to lay some eggs, I made a blood extraction syringe, and started extracting my own blood to get blood packs. I would need these to tame the Neo Venators. Then Hashirama laid her first egg. I finally had an extra large egg. I got two more eggs and used them to cook up some exceptional kibble, which I combined with the blood packs to turn them into coagulated kibble. Now I could finally tame myself some Neo Venators. On day 91, I crafted a ballista turret and some chain bowlers, and then we went to the red zone to find some Neo Venators. To tame a Neo Venator, you have to hit them in the face with a chain bowler, start riding them, and then feed them the coagulated kibble like taming an Equus, but with extra steps. Got it. What, it's still coming? What? Got it. What, it's running. Uh, why are you chasing me? Uh, it's a tablet. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get away from me! Press E. Tamed it. Tamed it. Tamed it. Tamed it. After many tries, I succeeded. I was now the proud owner of a female Neo Venator. Then I found a male and ran victorious once again. Tamed it. Whew. Before going back to base, I turned off Goat's Light and tried to get as many Nameless to spawn as possible in an attempt to get a Subterranean Reaper King to spawn, as I had never seen one before. After a couple minutes, the Alpha Nameless did a weird emote, and then one spawned behind us. We killed all the Nameless and engaged him in battle. Luckily he was a low level, so he was pretty easy to kill. He still didn't drop any loot though. After that, we went back home and I made a new Venator saddle. These guys were very big, even bigger than Rockley and Neji. They were also very fast. I tested their might at the Tsukumamis River, and they were insanely powerful. Definitely my strongest tame so far. They even had a tailspin attack, and could pick things up in their mouth, and chew on them. 
and of course, an awesome looking roll. While on our killing spree, I got a Nymongosaurus Chibi, which I equipped and named Ruben the Numpty. On day 94, I named the Neo Veneta couple Sakura and Sasuke, and got them to start breeding. Now was the time to grow an army of Neo Venators. Once Sakura laid her first egg, I picked it up and hatched it next to the air conditioners, and the first baby was a boy. I named him TSK. When he got older, I imprinted on him, and then started hatching and raising the next Neos. I named them Normal, Monkey, Lil Cap, and Crazy Jakey, and I got three identical triplets. I named them Troy, Happy Man, and Slayer 2. And then I hatched the final Neo, and named her Geki the Gecko. If you're wondering why the names are so random, it's because I named them after the most active members in the Zedfiles Discord server. There'll be invite links in the description and comments below if you want to join. I finished raising them all the next day, and then I made a blueprint station add-on for the upgrade station, and then I made them all ramshackle saddles. I put the saddles on them, and my army of 11 Neovenators was now complete. After that, I made upgraded armor for the other creatures that I would take to the boss fight. I also wanted to bring a Reaper King, so I began preparing to tame one. I built a small stone room for hatching the Reaper, and crafted a right shield, some stimulants, and structures to trap a Reaper Queen. And I also hatched the two other Rock Drake eggs that I got back on day 65, for in case I died, I needed a way to get back to my stuff. I named them Fat and Lazy. Then me and Rock Lee headed into the red zone to find a Reaper Queen. On day 96, I found a good level one. So I made a trap near her, then I lured her into the trap, got her, and blocked her in. I got out Monkey, my best Neo, and bit her until she was at below 2000 health, and started glowing pink. I approached her on foot, with my right shield in front of me, waiting to be impregnated. But then she broke my shield. I only crafted one of them, so I didn't know what to do next. Then I had the crazy idea of approaching her without a shield. Oh, where she missed? I approached her a third time and stood completely still when she began sniffing. Oh! She managed to grab me and impregnated me with a Reaper King embryo. And I only had one minute to get back to base and give birth to it. I wasn't able to get back home in time, but for some reason, the embryo stayed in my body. We killed a bunch of dodos and trilobites to max out the offspring XP, and I went into the stone box, ready to give birth but the countdown timer stayed at 0 seconds. I guess it glitched out because my hatch speed setting was too high. I exited to the main menu and joined back in, and the baby reaper immediately burst out of my chest and started scattering around on the stone floor. I ran outside, sprayed a reaper pheromone gland on me to convince it that I was its mother, and went back in. I claimed it, gave it some meat, and then it grew out of its larvae form and into its proper reaper king form. After imprinting and waiting for him to finish growing, I named him Mike Guy. Mike Guy was only a bit bigger than a Neo, but had an insane jump, and was much more powerful. More damage than a Neo, and more health than a Bracky. Mike Guy could just be the strongest thing I've ever tamed in Ark. He also took reduced damage from all attacks, unless there was a charged light around, just like his wild siblings. Yeah! Could have before it could mega stomp. I had now tamed all the creatures needed for the boss fight. The only thing left to do was to level up all the news. So on day 98, we went out, killing every single creature in sight. Kill them! Get it! We're strong enough. Oh nice. Get in! <laughs> we just all jumped on him. We can do it, guys. <gasps> There's an alpha basilisk! Nice. Get that guy. <laughs> 37 levels. Oh my. Oh, I got it. Loot crate. What? There's no alpha pellet. I saw you back on day 16. Alpha Dino Kairos. And I'm now ready to kill you. Get it. Oh, I just launched us up in the air. Stupid goose monster. Oh no. Nice, we did it. Let's open these. Oh my. I got element. I searched out the TV. Oh, look at him. 
Chibi Dinochiris. Oh, I got another one. Hello, Kudenai. Unless I got Narsita. Itachi's a big boy. And that concludes our hunting adventure. Day 100 was the day. The day to slay Edmund Rockwell and to send off Aberration. I packed my army into soul traps and said goodbye to all of my teams, as I would never see them again. Goodbye Orichimaru. Goodbye Shino. Goodbye Karen. Goodbye Tenten, my first carnivore team. Goodbye Kankuro and Tamari. Goodbye Shikamaru. Goodbye Choji. Goodbye Crunchy Peanut Butter, my very first mount. Goodbye Kakashi, Kiba, Kurama, and goodbye Unu, my first team on Aberration. Goodbye Naruto. Goodbye Fat and Lazy. Goodbye my amazing house. Goodbye my greenhouse. Goodbye Hashirama and Madara. Goodbye everyone. I'll miss you all. After that, Mia Rockley followed the giant metal skeleton towards the Rockwell terminal. Okay, we're at the very start of the map, where we started the whole playthrough, and now we follow this all the way to the Rockwell terminal. Bye, old base. Okay, we're here. I actually had to go back to base to make more shotgun ammo and upgrade my shotgun and armor. So now I am ready to fight the boss. Okay, here we go. This is our last fight together and our last fight on Aberration. So let's make sure we win. Look at him. He just came out from his bath. Okay, go get him guys. Oh, my guy's on that one. Oh, what? Oh, we got already. Okay, we did a good amount of damage. <laughs> my guy took out the last tentacle. So I didn't even need to shoot it. Oh yeah, and all these balls. They hit me. I'm in a lot of danger. I can also shoot them. Make them explode. So they don't get me. I think my guy just took it out again. Okay, that's nameless now. So my guy will just take care of them for us. Oh, now there's electricity. Those will stun me for eternity. Okay, got it. Oh, there's so many balls. Hi, my guy. We meet again. Got it. Oh, that's not my guy. Okay, there is. There is enemy Reaper Kings. Okay, we killed it. Okay, we got it. Attack him! Okay, he's, he's getting low on health. Let's go the other way this time. Okay, got it. Attack him! Whoa, there's so many Reapers! Ouch. Okay, got it. There's so many balls this time. Oh no. Electricity. Got it. He's so close. Get him. He's still alive. Happy man just died. Oh no. Okay, I need to finish this. Gekko the Gekko died. Sasuke died. Okay. Kill him. Nice! We killed him! Oh, good job guys. You did it. Yeah, look at this so stupid tentacle boy. Oh, we did it. We are now ascending. Okay, here, uh, take all my stuff. I didn't know, no longer, no longer I need my stuff. Just take it all. Goodbye, goat. It was nice knowing you.